Hey Robot fans, welcome back to The Build. We are in a very special place with two very special guests. This is Albert. Hi. And this is Taylor. How's it going? And this is the Taylor Made Armory, the local hangout and build zone of the Northeast Remnant, the New Jersey division of the 501st Legion. This is where everyone comes to build their armor, eat some food, drink some beers, and talk about Star Wars. <laughs> you could almost say it's a bit of a culture club. And today, I'm here to work on my come a come a come a come a come a chameleon. That's gold. I am really thankful that Taylor and Albert were around to help with this portion of the build. It's a lot of fabric work and sewing and a sewer I am not. Albert is a fellow commod up clone with his Captain Keeley build. So he's been down this road before and Taylor is a super proficient builder with 20 builds under his belt. He also made Albert's comma, so I am definitely in good hands here. This all starts with pattern making. Early on I made some drawings based on the CRL and did some rough eyeball measurements to give us a good starting point with these patterns. The main section here is made up of two identical yet mirrored slabs, so we are going to start with those. We made the initial patterns out of paper and used them to get a proper sizing on the armor. My initial measurements were close, but definitely not exact, so I'm glad I waited until after I had the final fitted armor to begin cutting the fabric. With the outer extents of the main slab portions figured out, we taped an additional one inch to each edge to allow for a seam line. It was at this point I was super glad I did not try to do all of this on my own because this method would have never occurred to me and I would have been flying blind on these seam lines. With our seams taped onto our main shape, we laid the templates onto the fabric. For the actual fabric, I'm using black duck cloth I picked up at a local Joann's Fabrics. Having an extra set of hands to help hold the fabric in place is nice because getting clean lines here is the key. This leaves us with our main shape traced out with an extra inch or so coming off of each edge. After carefully cutting the templates, I began folding those tabs over to recreate our main slab shape. But now we have some extra fabric behind it to make our seam line. I yielded to Taylor's expertise on the sewing machine. Looking back at the Velcro straps I sewed onto my suspenders a few videos back, I knew I wasn't going to get the clean straight lines I wanted, so best to leave this to the professionals. Since these slabs are identical but mirrored, we were able to repeat this process for the other half almost exactly, the only exception being folding the seams in the opposite direction. Next up we have these tabs which extend from the edges of the main slabs and wrap around the front of the belt. Just like before, this began with measuring on the armor with the two slabs in place and drawing up a template, tracing that onto some black duck cloth and cutting it out. After I had the folds pinned down, I did yet another test fit on the armor to make sure this was fitting as it should and then handed it off to Taylor for sewing. The process for this was a bit like the pillows you made back in Home Ec, where you sew the seams on the outside, then turn the whole thing inside out. These also have the added difficulty of these ribbing lines. Taylor did a ridiculously awesome job on this, and the lines on this comma are just outstanding. At this point in the build, I hadn't yet finished installing all of the magnets for the belt, so I didn't want to sew the slabs together until I knew for sure how everything was going to line up. So it was time to bid Taylor made Armory adieu for now and head back to my own shop. A couple days later, when the belt was all finished up, I was able to start adding holes to the top of the comma to line up with the installed magnets. I went right down the line, cutting holes for each of the magnets while keeping the top of the comma in line with the top of the belt. I did this on both sides, and after hand sewing the holes to reinforce them, I'm ready to attach the two panels at the back. I overlapped the two slabs as shown in the CRL and pinned them down. Now it's my turn at the sewing machine. I had asked Taylor a lot of questions while he was on the machine and I think I picked up some helpful tips and found out where I was going wrong with my previous attempts. This back seam went really nicely and boosted my sewing confidence for the rest of this build. With the seam sewn down to the belt, I also sewed a piece of Velcro to the back of the inside of the comma and a matching piece to the back of the armor. This will help hold the comma in place at the back where there's not a lot of magnets nearby to keep it in place. I did the same thing at the front with the two ends of the flaps right at the center of the ab. The CRL also calls for two black straps running from the center of the back waist seam and extending to the holsters. So I guess we need to build ourselves some holsters. So my original plan was to do a separate video on the holsters and the guns, but the cold weather caught up to me before I can get the guns finished, so we'll do the holsters now and the guns in the spring. Luckily the guns aren't really needed for approval. I did my usual finishing process on the holsters and got them smoothed out, and I used Krylon Fusion paint to get the holsters down to a nice black and did some final weathering to make them look a bit worn and torn like I like to do. 
For the holster straps, I'm using a one and a half inch black leather strap I picked up on Amazon. I made some markings along the leather to mark the extents of the holsters and leave some room to hang down from the belt, about four and a half inches or so. In addition to gluing the holsters to the front of the strap, I want the back of the strap to attach to the comma to hold it in place while I'm walking around. To do this, I'm going to glue and sew the hook side of some industrial Velcro onto the back of the strap, and the loop side will get sewn onto the comma. In the belt video, I discussed how all of this will attach to the back side of the smallest belt box, and now we can line everything up to get an idea of where our black straps will intersect with the holsters. For these black straps, I'm using a one and a half inch elastic strap. I went ahead and sewed in the X shape at the back as seen on the CRL. From there, it's all about aligning the front end of the strap to intersect with the trigger portion of the holster. I then sewed the edges of the elastic strap right to the seam line, and after repeating this on the other side, we have a bona fide clone commander comma ready to wear. So this worked out great. A huge thank you to Taylor and Albert for helping me get this comma all sorted out. In the beginning, I was concerned about how the tension behind the belt would affect the magnetic hold of the belt boxes, but I left myself a comma-sized thickness between the belt and the armor, so this actually fits really nicely. Well, everyone, we have but one more episode left in this build, the pauldron. Then we will have a completed clone costume, which is hopefully ready for approval. So stay tuned for that. Don't forget to like and subscribe. As always, we are going to finish with a progression shot, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.